Hey guys, Scott here and welcome to The Rogue Review. So today I'm going to be talking about X-Men Apocalypse, which is the brand new film in the X-Men franchise. Now, I'm not going to go into spoilers here, so don't worry. I mean, I'd love to, but if you want me to do a spoilers review, let me know down in the comments. If there's enough interest, I'll do it. But anywho, let's get into it. So X-Men Apocalypse, is it good? Yeah, it is. I and. Do you know what? I'm a little bit surprised because I was not a fan of any of the trailers. Um, like, the trailers were just really sort of just overly dramatic. And after Deadpool, which sort of takes the pee out of superhero films, you know, I was just... I, w I wanted something fun and something a bit lighter. All the trailers seemed to just be buildings being eviscerated and apocalypse going, everything they've built will fall. Like, literally, I think every trailer had that line in. So I wasn't jacked for this film and I, I was putting it off going to see it, but I felt, I, I love these characters. I sort of need to go see this film. And so I dragged myself along today and I'm so happy I did because I was so surprised by this film. What a great ride. Like, this really reminded me of X2. You know, it felt like that sort of adventure. And now we're starting to get back some of those characters from the original um, the original films. You know, we've got Scott Summers and Jean Grey and Nightcrawler all in here. And I'm going to jump back into them in a second. But just to give you a little bit of uh, context of what the film's about, X-Men Apocalypse, essentially there's a bad guy called Apocalypse in ancient Egypt. And basically he goes around with his four horsemen, four powerful mutants that he imbues with great strength. And he goes around absorbing more mutants powers, you know, so he can he basically is becoming a god gradually and he gets screwed over by his followers. And so he ends up encased underground uh, for thousands of years until the modern day. Well, I say modern day 1983 um, where he is awakened accidentally. And so Apocalypse rises up. He's going to assemble a new set of horsemen, of mutants in the modern day, give them special powers. And then he's basically he's going to he's going to take over the world. He's going to kill the humans and then he's going to let the uh, let the mutants, the strong rise up and rule the world. That's apparently his plan. And it's a simple premise. It's a simple premise, very comic book premise. The bad guy's going to, you know, rule the world. Um, but what? It's done so well because it, it sets up the simple premise, but the adventure of how we get to that big fight at the end, the big conflict, is really interesting. Um, it's it's a proper ensemble piece. You know, we are jumping about all over the board with different characters, but for the most part of it, we are hanging out with Scott Summers, a.k.a. Cyclops, Jean Grey, a.k.a. Jean Grey and uh, Kurt Wagner, aka Nightcrawler, and so we're hanging out with them as they're sort of trying to um, help out the other mutants who are uh, captured and and under Apocalypse's control. And so we follow these characters, and these are the sort of the younger mutants, and so they're they're not proper confident like like the Mystique and the Beast and the Professor X. They're they're insecure, and it's uh, it's it's refreshing. We we with these new characters on this mission and they're brave yet they're frightened by what they're going through and dealing with this what this film does so well is you really get the emotional impact you really feel it how these characters are responding to these larger than life events you know they're larger than life characters because they've got superpowers but they feel so real because they're reacting to these things the way we would they're they're harmed by these situations and we get mostly lots of close-ups of faces so we really we see all the little emotions that these characters are going through it's shot really well so well done Brian Singer and whoever your uh, <laughs> cinematographer was um, and so I, I really really felt um, the characters of, of Jean Grey and Cyclops were really compelling here in a way they haven't been in previous films um, dare I say it they were better performances than Famke Janssen and James Marsden gave us, you know, um, just because of that insecurity and that, that youthfulness. Um, it was, it just, it was great to have them back. I was so pleased. And how can I go through this review without mentioning McAvoy and Fassbender, Professor X and Magneto, their relationship continues to be so real. Their conflict is just, it just grinds the gears. I mean, I wish these guys could get on, you know, I really wish they could, but they just, they can't because the ideologies are different and because they've been shaped so differently by the same offense in their lives. Um, it's just, it's brilliant. And like civil war, you know, this, um, 
all the great character work uh, means that we care about the big set pieces and all the big action. It's not just visual noise. We really care about what's happening in these action set pieces. And it's great. The X-Men all come together and fight at the end. And there's lots of different little bits here and there. There's so many great little moments in this film. Nods to other films in the franchise and films outside of it. X-Men Apocalypse is a stellar film that you should go see immediately. I've been Scott. This is a Rogue Review. Thanks for watching.